Hello everyone, my name is Danny, and this is going to be my review for the movie Ken. So, Ken is rated PG-13, it runs an hour and 42 minutes, it is a 2018 movie, I just saw it in theater uh, earlier today. Chased by a vengeful criminal, the feds and a gang of otherworldly soldiers, a recently released ex-con and his adopted teenage brother, are forced to go on the run with a weapon of mysterious origin as their only protection. This stars newcomer Miles Truitt, Jack Rayner, Dennis Quaid, and uh, Jane Franco. I'll say right off the bat, because I've been thinking about this all day. Uh, I saw this movie at 11 a.m. I'm doing my review at 11 p.m. here. Um, I just feel like there has to be a sequel to this movie. And if there never will be, then I'll be really sad that I saw this movie. Because that's all that it feels like this got made for. I'll just say that right off the bat. If you're wondering about seeing this, be excited about seeing it. Because there better be a sequel. Otherwise, it makes no sense to make this movie whatsoever. So, that being said, when I went in to go see Ken, uh, I saw the preview many times on TV and other media outlets and stuff. I... Figured nobody would go see it, and I was about right. Uh, in my theater, I think there was about six people. We were in one of the smallest theaters of the you know movie theater building. So obviously, they're not really caring about it or thinking it's going to be a big hit or anything. Um, they have something going on this week about showing all the old superhero movies in the IMAX. So I think people are going to that. And they're like missing out on these new releases. So I really felt sorry for Ken coming out. Um, Operation Finale, I didn't feel like going to see that. So I probably won't until it comes out on DVD. I just can't take another war movie. I just There have been so many. So I really was excited about going to see Ken. Um, it, is, it seemed like a very original movie. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know who directed it. I didn't really care. It sounds like they're, they're kind of newcomers. Like um, It said something about it in the beginning that this movie is based off a short film that they that these brothers made. And so they decided to, somebody approached them to make a, a full-length feature. So it's interesting. You know, they got people like Dennis Quaid and James Franco to jump on board. That's great. And they got this kid to star brand new. I don't know if he was in their short film or not, but they got him. And he was all right. You know, I mean, first film, you know, if anybody, if he becomes a big star, then people will remember his mo first movie being this. But if he's not, then, you know, whatever. Um, going into it, I was just excited to see it, see what it's about. See if it entertained, see if it was really original or not, and just kind of go from there. My first instinct as kind of a person that thinks differently about movies because I like to do these reviews is that there's two storylines going on. The review doesn't make it sound like that, but there is. There's like two complete storylines that have nothing to do with each other, and they're happening, they're happening simultaneously. So what happens when you have a movie like that? You're supposed to end up tying them together, right? That doesn't happen at all. And I kind of think they missed the point on that. You know what I mean? Like, I know these alien people, we'll just call them that for the purposes of being understood. These aliens, they want to make sure that they're not seen they want to, you know, not affect Earth's atmosphere and uh, bringing in new technology and all that. That's, I mean, it's understandable. That's fine. But if you're going to be a storyline in a movie, while some 
all other stuff that's really primary storytelling, um, you have to be eventually intertwined. Otherwise, you're just confusing other story going on and interrupting parts of our main storyline. And it just kind of gets annoying that we have to be keeping track of you while we're trying to keep track of the main story. I, I just don't really know what they were trying to accomplish there until it comes to the end. And then it finally brings it together. But you're like, you have to think back to the whole hour and 42 minutes and try and connect everything after you've seen the movie, after you walk out, after you go home. That's why this took me 12 hours to process. I was like, I've got to understand this a little bit so I can actually talk about it because I was very confused watching this movie while I watched it. And as I left the building, I really didn't understand what I just saw. And that's why I said right away, now I'll get to that now. This movie better have a sequel. Because if it doesn't, then it's like one of the most confusing movies of all time. Because you're just going to have a movie where, you know, it has aliens. And it has one of your biggest stars, Dennis Quaid. Um, I'll just say it. He's killed off in the first half hour. You know, because I mean, the reason why that's not a big deal for me to say, if you're going to see it, is because it's not about that. Um, it's it's kind of like part of the setup of the story. So it's not a big, like, spoiler. And really, the movie is entertaining enough as it is without that. But it's nice that Dennis Quaid's in the movie. But then it gets really slow along the way because, like, all of a sudden... The brothers have to like leave. It says that as part of the review is a big thing, but it doesn't feel like this big momentous thing. It just kind of happens, and then it gets explained along the way why they're doing what they're doing, and it it never really seems like a big momentous like change in setting. It just kind of melts together, and a bunch of stuff happens, and you don't know really know why this person's involved. You don't really know why that person's really angry. You don't know who any of the side characters are. They're just kind of there. And then James Franco says all the lines. Um, it's kind of crazy. And things get explained along the way, like I said. But when it comes to the end, I'm just going to say this much. That if they are going to have the ending that they had, and they are going to put the importance that they put on this kid then there has to be another movie and if nobody sees this then are they really going to make a sequel i don't know but they better so how do you grade a movie that if it doesn't have a sequel then this is all you got i mean i have to think that way you have to think this way that this might be all we ever get and there's nothing after it you know, I just, I, I can't understand that, but we've had movies like that before, but, you know, I mean, I'm still waiting on The Host too. The way that ends drove me crazy, still does. I still want a sequel to that, the way they end, and they're like, oh, we're going to war, and nope, <laughs> and the sequel never comes, and never go to war. I'm like, dang it. So, the other thing I really wanted to say was that, I thought this movie was completely going to be about the young brother and it ends up being totally about the older brother and his problems and his storyline and what's going on with him and his involvement with James Franco and his, you know, arguments with Dennis Quaid. Um, wow. You know, I just was like, you kind of painted a different picture of this movie showing the young kid and the gun, like, in every single scene that he has the gun. And then it ends up not being really about him. He kind of be, ends up being along for the ride on this adventure that the older brother has to take. And it kind of reminds me of other movies that I just mentioned on one of my last reviews, the whole April O'Neil and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where the movie was completely about April O'Neil for, like, the first 20 minutes and the turtles didn't come on screen and people went crazy about that. I kind of felt that 
effect again when this movie was about the older brother. I thought it was going to be about the younger one. I thought it was about him and the gun. It kind of was like that, but like I said, everything kind of comes to fruition at the end, and then you have to think back on the last hour and 42 minutes, and then you have to figure it out. So just for being confusing, I have to give this movie a C, but it's boring and slow on parts. Like It's hard to just sit there and watch them talk about nothing. But there's some things that make it interesting. The couple short moments that we get some action is good and entertaining. And you kind of know what's happening, but it looks really cool. And the ending just, I mean, it can kind of blow your mind if you let it. But for the anticipation that it brings, I'm going to give this movie a C+. Plus. I'm hoping that they make another one. I hope that it explains a lot and kind of brings us into another world with these alien characters that were in this movie. Um, it's not a spoiler because he's on the cast. Michael B. Jordan is a huge star. You know, he's making uh, the next Creed movie and everything. And he's in this. If they make another movie of Ken and he's like a big part of it, that could be a big movie. And people would have to see this one to see the second one. So that's why I'm suggesting to go see this. Put it on your list. Uh, you might want to say that you've actually seen this movie in case they make another one with Michael B. Jordan, who's getting to be a kind of a big star. So, and um, yeah, so thanks a lot, guys. I suggest seeing Ken as C+. My name's Danny. If you like this or any of my other videos, try and give some of them a watch. Like and subscribe to my channel if you would. And enjoy your movies. Thanks.